Hi, I am Dr. Hussain Bhaji. I am practicing gastroenterology for the last uh, 17 years in Nasik. Uh, IBD, as uh, the name suggests, it is inflammatory bowel disease. This disease primarily affects the intestines. It can affect small intestine, large intestine, uh, predominantly. But uh, there are various different uh, problems which occur other than the intestines. And we can divide them into two parts maybe. One can be a direct association of the disease and one can be a effect of the disease. So direct association of disease, uh, it can affect the eyes, uh, causing red eyes commonly. Uh, okay, So this can be because of, this is an autoimmune disease, so it can affect the other, other organs in the same way. It can affect the skin, so it can produce uh, ulcers over the skin, it can produce nodules over the skin. The most common extra intestinal manifestation of IBD is it affects the joints. So either a patient can have back pains, it can be associated with uh, some ankylosing spondylosis. Uh, it can be associated with large joint pains, which are asymmetric. Like sometimes you may have affection of the knee or a shoulder or like the, it won't be a symmetrical joint uh, involvement. So these are various uh, extra intestinal features. There is uh, one more uh, affection which can happen to the liver. Patient can have uh, jaundice, uh, secondary to primary sclerosing cholangitis. This is associated with uh, IBD. Now, the second part is uh, the effects of IBD. IBD is associated with malabsorption, which leads to deficiencies of various vitamins. Uh, it can, uh, including vitamin D and calcium, and this can affect the bones, and uh, that can lead to uh, uh, reduced mobility, productivity, bone pains, uh, symptoms related to anemia. So these are indirect or uh, effects of IBD. Uh, the most common reason are two. One, because they get completely cured of this of their symptoms, and they feel that you now the disease is uh, almost cured, despite of uh, doctors telling them that the medicine need to be continued uh, lifelong and it has to be tapered only under the guidance of doctors. But despite of that, because patient does not have any symptom, they tend to stop the medicines. And uh, the num it is a polypharmacy; number of medicines are more. So after having no symptoms, the motivation goes off. And that, that is the first cause. Uh, second reason is they don't respond to medicines. And then they like uh, they have been taking medicines for a long time. And uh, still, if the problem persists, this can lead to discontinuation of medicines. And then many people can, uh, do have a tendency to try alternative medicines. Uh, and even if they respond to medicines, they find uh, options in alternative medicine. So this is the commonest reason. Third important reason could be uh, the, the medicines are costly and the cost factor is definitely there. And that is the reason somehow the patient, despite of wanting to take the medicine, they tend to stop them. Uh, in older patients, uh, as I said, IBD is associated with uh, uh, malabsorption, maldigestion. It leads to various nutritional deficiencies. So old patients already are fragile and uh, because of IBD, they have issues with the bone and issues with uh, blood loss, they can have anemia. So this can affect the quality of life very significantly. Uh, and uh, it may make them prone to various pathological fractures. Uh, so they need to uh, be take, uh, nutritionally taken care quite well. Uh, another challenge in old patient is already they may be having various uh, medicines for different other ailments like heart problems or uh, diabetes and that too for longer time and they may be having those associated complications and along with that when they have to take medicines for IBD that again tends to demotivate them in taking medicines and thus the compliance uh, hampers in older patients.